Welcome to Keeping Taps. I'm Tap the Croc, and every Monday, I talk to someone here in North Idaho, the goal to connect more people in the Coeur d'Alene area. And then every Friday, I talk to someone outside the community to bring in a new perspective and to learn a little bit about yourself. Good morning. I have Chris Thompson with me today, uh, aka uh, Sup Daily. If you're following him on social media, TikTok, Instagram, um, Twitch, any of those outlets or platforms, um, and I found him actually on TikTok and fell in love with his content and his personality and his energy. Um, and I started just following everything he's doing. So he is. I'm going to see if I can get as many things right. Is you're a public speaker, uh, live streamer, social media. Uh, TikToker, singer, hiker, uh, Twitch creator, all of the things, um, entrepreneur, doing some really cool things. He's got merchandise. Um, so it's awesome. So first, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, of course. I love doing these things. It's fun. Yes. And we're, and like we said, we were just talking about we're stuck at home. So it's really fun to do these things is when you can connect with people when you're sitting at your home by yourself. 100%. We need that now more than ever. So tell us a little bit, if I didn't cover it all, tell us a little bit about your, yourself and what you're doing right now. Uh, yeah, you made me sound very busy. And then I, I guess I am. Um, uh, I mean, I've been doing social media content creation as my full-time job for the last 10 years. Um, I started on YouTube in 2006 before I even knew what YouTube was. I thought it was like a private place to store videos. And now 15 years later, I'm, I'm still creating content. Um, yeah, at this point, I'm focusing on developing speeches. Like I had my first TEDx talk last month, which was very exciting. And um, live streaming, creating community there, and basically just creating a place for discussion and community and belonging and, uh, and it's been, it's fantastic. I love it. So I just found out about the live streaming not too long ago. Um, I was actually mm -hmm. in Vegas with some of my friends and there was a guy live streaming at this one little place. And I was like, what is he doing? He had like three different cameras and people were asking me. To do I had no idea. It was like an eye opener to me. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the live streaming and like the Twitch stuff that you do. Yeah, the, that version of live streaming is called IRL. Uh, and those people, I don't know how they do it. Like they go out into public and film themselves. Like I, that piques my anxiety, like nobody's business. I just don't like bothering people. Um, with the, with the way I do it is um, I just, I don't know. We just sit and talk. It's, it, I, I, people ask me to explain what it is that I do. I created a community. And one of the things that's mo most important in creating a community is you want to show people exactly the the vibe you're looking for in that chat so in the initially when i had because my live streaming wasn't doing that well for a little while and then when TikTok really like blew up it brought a lot of new people in and a lot of new personalities and i spent that first part basically i know it sounds harsh but making examples of behaviors that are not allowed in my world and now it's heaven. I don't have to say anything. They police themselves. They have their own connections and friendships. Like someone's getting married next year that met in my chat. Like wow. it's just, it's just really about creating an environment that fosters like love and discussion and civil discourse. Mm, that's so cool. Um, and you did, did you do like a Thanksgiving stream too, just not too long ago where you had Thanksgiving with people? Yeah, I, I, I initially had a couple of different Thanksgiving plans and then with COVID just really spiking recently, I just didn't think it was responsible to have any gathering. So I was like, well, there's going to be a lot of people who need somewhere to go. And that's honestly how my audience grew so rapidly is when lockdown happened starting in March. I basically said people are going to need somewhere to go. So I went from streaming four days a week to seven days a week for the entire time on both Twitch and TikTok. And it just created a bond between me and my audience is called the Tweirdos. It started on Twitch, so it's Twitch and Weirdo put together. So it's, you can be exactly who you are as long as you're respectful. And I think uh, it's continued to do that since I established that. That's awesome. Well, you're like a natural born entrepreneur. You, you see opportunity, you create it. But what were you like as a kid? 
<laughs> um, really sensitive. I'm still a sensitive person, but like I had, I had no boundaries. Um, I didn't, I just let people do whatever they wanted. Um, I was really busy. I was always doing sports or musicals. Um, I was just like a really nice kid. <laughs> And, but we moved a lot as kids. So I, I moved like to five different, five different states. Uh, I spent fifth grade in two different states. So I, I, it was easy for me to make friends, but I found that it was difficult for me to maintain long-term relationships because I was so used to just leaving. And this is pre-internet. So there was really no way other than calling on the phone or writing letters to stay in contact with someone. Well, I know, and you're saying sensitive. You've actually made me cry. I've watched some of your videos, and I'm like, oh, why am I crying? Yeah, you're an empath, so you yes. feel the emotions that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the purposes that I have, especially as a man, expressing my emotions, because there's a lot of emotionally inept men, and there's many reasons for that. Um, some of them that have very little to do with the action of those particular men. But I basically put myself in a position where I express something that's actually really common, a common feeling, but a lot of people sit in silence because they don't want to seem like they're the weirdo. So I basically, sometimes even when I'm not really going through that, make myself the example so that other people feel comfortable expressing themselves. So maybe the thing that you connected with me on was something that you identified within yourself and I opened the door for you to at least emote that. Oh, so true. And I, I watched one of your videos or something where there was a woman like actually thinking about suicide and how you like impacted her with all your mm. positivity and what you're telling people. And I think that you're so raw and real on all of your platforms that it's very um, emotional and it's very attractive because you can just connect with so many people because we're all going through some kind of shit. Like we're all going mm -hmm. through it. But you're able, like you said, is usually we can feel comfortable like opening up to you and you're not going to judge anyone. And I think it's 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 amazing what you're doing. Yeah, you have to sit, you have to be the change you want to see. I know that's cheesy, but it's exactly what I do. Yeah. So you are going into a whole like realm of, you know, you said you've been doing this for 10 years. But when you started, it's something that like 10 years ago, very, very new. No mm -hmm. one's holding your hand. No, there's no classes for it. There's no college course for it. Um, is there a, like something you learned or failed at, like you can really think about towards the beginning that you learned the most about in your career? Um, well, so I've been full time for 10 years, but I've been doing it for 15. So, uh, I, it's just like, it, I feel like creating at least like meaningful content. I don't want to like bash anyone else's, but like the content that I make is meant to make impact. It's not fluff. Um, I think probably what's weird is one of the biggest lessons that I learned actually happened this year, which is crazy after doing this for so long. And the biggest lesson that I learned is that I know not, I no longer need outside validation to know the type of person that I am. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk about sensitive subjects, the people who feel like maybe they possess some of those things that maybe I might be calling out, yeah. some of their first reactions is to lash out at me and say awful things. And it happens all the time. It kind of comes with the territory and it used to really bring me down. But this year I was like, I know exactly who I am. I've been doing this for so long. Am I what this person is saying? No. And then I move on with my life instead of absorbing. And that has been such a gift. It, it's not always perfect, but it definitely helps me be less affected by the opinions of randoms on the internet. Right. And I think you just posted a video where you're kind of taking a little break from TikTok because yeah. um, it was such a good, it was a great point is that, you know, you, we can, you can call out the men and they're just like, you know, we can bash them and they're like these, they're cheating or they're doing these horrible things. But when you're like, you know, women aren't, you know, innocent. And when you call them out, it's like, you became the bad guy. Yes. Uh, it's it's a mixture of things there. I'm thinking I'm seeing a lot of people who stay constant victim. And when you say that, what people hear who are in that mindset is you are victim shaming me. But in reality, what I'm doing is saying you don't have to permanently live this way. I believe in you enough that you can rise above. 
this. And you don't have to live constantly upset and angry at the world. And if you don't, if you don't want to hear that, um, you, you, you lash out. And to give an example, this actually just happened this morning. Um, so I shut down the comments on that video because it wasn't a discussion. It was, a, I was delivering a message. And then I shut down my DMs. Nobody could DM me, right? Someone actually went to the effort to see that I couldn't comment, go to my Instagram, find my business email and write me a business email. And this is what was said. The reason women are so quick to attack or be responsive is because we are so abused and misused and mistreated our whole lives. You posted one video about one woman sexually assaulting you and it happened to me monthly, my entire life. Stop, stop, stop. Mm. And I, when I come back to posting on TikTok, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this as an example. Obviously not showing... Um, any information about who they are, but this is what I was talking about in the video. It's perfectly illustrated that the toxicity comes from women as well. I see toxic connected to masculine so much where really toxic is a, is a behavior that has not feminine or masculine aspects. It just is. And I also want to get away from attaching masculine to men and feminine to women. There are men and women that have both masculine and feminine aspects. And so this person is, is what this attitude is one of the reasons that men don't speak because when we do speak like, okay, I mean, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I was drugged when I was raped. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that my experience is invalid because you've experienced more and you don't even know that you experience more. She doesn't know what my history is. She doesn't know what I've gone through. So my hope in creating this discussion is to show if we're going to say, listen to victims, let's not attach gender to it. Men and women go through struggles and we should be supporting each other instead of having these like weird trauma comparisons. Mm -hmm. Nobody wins in the whose life is harder competition. Exactly. I mean, that's exactly, um, and another reason that your content is so powerful is that you're, you're really open about what you've gone through and your AP and people can connect with that. You probably have this one bad email to like a hundred, right. Like you, you impacting people's lives. 100%. And you, yeah. And you showing, but it can be that one email. You're like, no, this is, this is not how it is. Well, unfortunately it's not just this email. Yeah. Like I get comments like this all the time and there are so many women. It's not a little bit of women. There's so many women that don't believe in supporting men because they've been hurt by men where most of my trauma, like, like, yeah, I went through my rape situation, but there were there, I could, I've been assaulted. I can count a dozen times. I've been beat up multiple times. And this is all at the, at the hands of women. So why is it, why, when I go through that, do I not apply that to an entire gender, but women feel free, not all women, but a lot of women feel free just bashing men. And if you want men to be better, if you want men to elevate, if the only thing that they think they can be is trash, well, nothing's gonna ever change. Mm. You know, like if you hear, think about, think about the young men in your life. If all they hear is men, is tr men are trash, men are trash, men are trash. How do you think they're not gonna internalize that and think, well, I'm trash. Yeah, and oh. now we got another, another, another person who's going to grow up hating themselves. And then that manifests itself in destructive behavior. Oh, so true. Um, I think, it, and you have that through your content, which I think is fantastic. And that's why I was drawn to you is because it's, um, you show both sides and I think that's fantastic. And you're constantly showing people to love themselves. How do you, um, how do you show yourself love? That's a journey for a lot of us. Um, Cause we know where the bodies are buried. You know, we know where our skeletons are. So it's, it's, I don't, I, I don't necessarily, I think the most loving act someone can do is accepting themselves as they are in that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, like we are all imperfect beings. We are all in process. So looking at yourself and saying, you know, it's not that I don't want to improve. 
but I do, I, I, I am proud of where I am right now and I'm willing to, to move forward. So I think one of the things that I just started to do is accept where, where I am mentally, accept my body, like I have body image issues, just like anyone else. And just, just loving myself in this moment and spending time talking to people that enrich me and that I can enrich back. Being of service is, is a really big one. Volunteering does so much for you and your self-love. Oh, I'm the same way. That's, that's something where I, I find um, where I, I, I guess it's a guilty pleasure. It's something that I do it selfishly. Like it makes me feel good. I'm doing mm-hmm. it to help other people, but I'm also like at the end of the day, I'm like, man, I feel really good about myself. And it's one of those moments. Everybody does that. <laughs> no one makes actions that are completely selfless. We always have some sort of gain, but there's nothing wrong with that. Like if you're helping the world, why should you not benefit from that? You know, if that's the only reason you're doing it, that's kind of gross, but yeah. like, why shouldn't everybody benefit in situations where you're doing good for the world? Yeah. So you're inspiring many people um, to become better, to be the best self, you know, to work through, maybe they're all going through something similar. Um, but what, like, is there someone or something that inspires you daily? My father, mm-hmm. he, um, He's, he's actually one of the reasons that I don't really, it's not allow, I'm trying to think of the right word for it. I acknowledge the fact that we all have different starting lines in life, 100%. And some people have to work way harder to get to where they are in life, 100%. But that does not mean that, that it's impossible and it does not mean that you can't become a productive member of society. And my father is an example of that. Like I moved five times as a kid. He moved 15 times as a kid and moved out by the age of 13. He was abused by his father. He was abused by his stepfather. He started working in the age of, of 12. He's pretty sure that they were homeless for a period of time. He used to sleep on a porch you know, at a, at a house, like he has been through so much trauma and abuse and struggle, graduated head of his class, got a great job, raised a beautiful family, was not destructive in the way that people were destructive to him. So he's an example of you can break the cycle if you have an abundance mindset, but you have to choose victim or abundance. You have that choice. And when, again, when you say that to people, if they don't want to do it, because it's way more comfortable to stay victim. Oh, yeah. If they, if they don't want to do it, they hear you're attacking them. But really, I'm just saying, I have faith in you that you, you could live a happy life, a successful life. Um, and I hope that for, for anybody. That's awesome. Well, we're, we're talking about a lot of serious stuff, but really- yeah. <laughs> Really, this guy's hilarious too. So a lot of your content is funny. You call out some of your dating stuff or people sliding mm-hmm. into your DMs and the funny, I, I mean, I love it. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, you're living in Denver. Um, tell us if we're, if we're going to Denver, where is the must place to eat? Okay. In Denver, if you're going to go to breakfast, you go to Denver Biscuit Company. They do this. I'm not really a biscuit guy, but the biscuit sandwiches here are incredible. And if you have a sweet tooth, they do this like homemade cinnamon roll that is just doused in frosting. It's delicious. If you're trying to get pizza, there's a place called Pizza Peddler that does all sorts of different like gourmet pizzas where I do on one of my concoctions put pineapple on it. I don't know how that became such a discussion. It's my mouth. I will do what I want with it. Um, I'm trying to think of where where else I've gone. It's so hard because I haven't been going anywhere because you can't really go <laughs> anywhere. Um, I don't know. There's so much in Denver. There's so much culture yes. um, that people don't know about. And Denver is a smaller big city. So it's really easy to like get around and explore love that. So outside of, uh, you know, everything, all your work and your hobbies, what is, what are some hobbies that maybe we don't know about that you enjoy doing? Um, that you don't know about, well, I just started learning guitar. 
I've been promising myself to learn guitar for like, I don't know, forever. So starting guitar, I do play piano, but which I don't really share online really. Um, and I sing opera. I sang opera for a long time. Awesome. Um, I don't know about hobbies. I'm really into virtual reality, archery and boxing. It's so much fun and it's such a good workout. I just got that Oculus Quest 2 headset and like, it's so much fun. My whole family, so my family this year, because my sister, while she lives down the street from my parents, is a nurse in a COVID unit. So she's trying to stay separate from, from mom and dad. And so my parents both have the Quest 1, and then my mom's getting the Quest 2 for my dad, and then I have the Quest 2, and then my aunts bought each other the Quest 2. So what we're going to do, and I don't know if you have this tradition in your household, but we didn't have a fireplace. So for Christmas, when we open presents, we pull up the Yule log on TV. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yes. Yes. So what we're going to do is there's an app called Big Screen where I can pull up something on my browser and it's uh, an environment where you have a little avatar and you can talk to each other. So we're going to open gifts and put the Yule log on the virtual reality screen and my aunts are in New Jersey. My sister can't hang out. Like, and we're all going to be in this VR theater together and talking this like we're, we're doing our best I think it's awesome and I think so many people like give a hard time to social media and to like all this online stuff and I'm like if you use it correctly I mean it really can bring us together especially during a pandemic mm -hmm. I did the uh, Mother's Day she picked a movie and we sat in a movie theater together and watched a movie you know oh that is awesome Cre I love that <laughs> you have to get creative otherwise you're gonna lose it <laughs> So if you were able, if you were given a billboard to have in Denver, what would your billboard either have or say on it? Mm, what would the billboard say? The first thing that came to mind is me just waving and saying hi. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think people just want to be acknowledged and feel like they could connect with someone. Hi. And then maybe my social media as if they wanted to say hi back, you know, just just something that connects people. That's always been kind of my goal. I'm not the best at marketing. I'm not the best at like a lot of the businessy end of things, but I do know how to connect people and build a community. So a uh, human connection is one of the most important things and something that we need more of. So I'd probably just say hi. Hi. Hey. <laughs> How's, hey, it going? <laughs> How's your day? <laughs> um, so do you believe that, you know, everyone has a life purpose? And if so, do you know yours or you're certain of who is your, if you believe in that? Um, I think everybody can have a life purpose. I think it's what we need, um, a lot of us in order to like, keep our heads about us, like a, a goal, something to work towards. Otherwise, what are we doing? We're just kind of like treading water. Um, I would say my life purpose is to elevate others. You know, when, when we talk about privilege, that's something that gets thrown around quite a bit. And me as a white man, I am in a very privileged group. And so one of the things that, that I can do, being not as emotionally connected to some of the struggles that we have in society is facilitate the conversations and elevate the voices of those members of that community to create understanding. So I would say my main purpose is to elevate others, create understanding and discussion and self-love. You know, just basically... It's, I think that kind of breaks down to connection again. Like I want to connect people. I want us to talk. I want us to learn. I want us to grow. Mm, that's perfect. So everyone is struggling, as we said before, whether you're dealing, you lost your job, whether you're dealing with depression, you know, maybe, I mean, it could be a number of things, illness. Um, what is a, a piece of advice you could give someone right now dealing with a lot of these hard, hardships? Life gives you where you focus your energy. So I saw a quote, I wish I, I wish I had it pulled up, but it was like chalk on the sidewalk. And it basically said, I went into 2020 thinking about all the things that I could have, and I'm going to leave 2020 being grateful for the things that I do. Mm -hmm. So you can focus on what you lack. You can focus on the things that you have no control over, or you can grab a hold of the things that you do and focus on building you know, like take your time and be grateful for the things that you have. Like even if you have an internet connection to even read that you are 
so blessed. If you have heat, I've lived through not having, being able to afford a heat bill. Like it sounds, if you really take a step back and look at the greater scheme of things, especially in, in this country, in the US, we are so blessed in so many ways. And if you focus your energy on negative things, you will manifest negative things. If you focus on positive things, you will manifest those. And it's your choice. Yeah, that's awesome. So do you have any big projects or things that you have coming coming up anytime soon? Um, basically, I'm trying to, I'm writing a book because um, I had a I had my TEDx talk last month and the TEDx talk was called Influencer as a Verb. Yeah. Um, so many people look at influencer as a title. It, and for me, it's not, I am an influencer. It's how do I influence? So I basically um, tried to break down 15 years of experience into a 12 minute talk. Um, so the plan is to keep developing that speech. I wanted to, uh, the, the camera work wasn't the best with the TEDx thing. So I want to develop my own version that has higher quality audio, higher quality video. And then I really just want to like show people what it's about, but I want to have an expanded version that tells all of the stories of me starting and where I am today and the lessons I learned along the way. It's kind of like I became an influencer so you don't have to thing, you know, like I'm going to go through all those struggles so that because when I started, YouTube was six months old. Nobody knew what YouTube was. You need like 10,000 subscribers to get into the top hundred and nobody made any money because Google hadn't bought it yet. So it was like the people from my generation of YouTuber, we didn't have anyone before us to guide us. So I really want to help guide, especially young creators who will have a lot of influence as people move away from television. Like kids don't watch TV, they watch YouTube. Yep. You know, they watch TikTok, they, their online creators is, is their TV. So I want to like guide them so that they know that you can, you don't have to follow toxic trends in order, like don't eat a Tide Pod so that you get a million views because after that million views, one, if you survive, um, they'll leave because they were there for the thing that you did, not you. Yeah. So you can have success and maintain your integrity mm -hmm. and um, not damage yourself in the process. Or like, you don't need an OnlyFans account or something like that. You know? It, it's if that's what you want to do, go do it. But like you have, if, if you're doing that because you think that's your only option, it's, it, that's not the case. Do you ever just get completely exhausted from constantly being on with being an influencer on multiple different platforms? Every day. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, it's, it, it's a tough, tough position because like I recognize that it's every day. People are like, oh, just take away, take take a walk away from social media. And like, I was like, okay, why don't you walk away from your job for a week and see how that goes? Are you going to get fired? Are you going to not make money? Are you going to be able to put food on the table? Like, it's my job. It's not this like funsy thing that I do. It is fun, but it's also not always fun. Yeah, so, I, I mean, like I said, like with the whole thing of TikTok, it just has to get exhausting to a point where you do just want to take a break and get away from it. But like you said, when you your full-time job makes mm -hmm. it difficult. Um, so I, I think one of the things I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start banking a bunch of material and then just take a step away because as much as my social media world is so important, none of it matters if my mental health isn't there. None of it. 100%. That is um, something a lot of people uh, take for granted that, it's very taxing on you. Um, I, I totally get that. So how can um, me and my listeners and followers support you right now? Um, I mean, just if you, if you enjoy the content that I put out, share it with people, like, like the post. That's what shows any of these apps algorithmically that it's content that you want to elevate, you know? I think a lot of people spend a lot of time elevating negative content because we have this like immediate reaction with something negative to want to lash out at it. And unfortunately it started to foster an environment of negative content mm -hmm. where if we see something wonderful, we go, Oh, that's wonderful. And we move on. 
but you have to engage with it if that's the environment that you want to create. I purposely go through, if I'm sliding through TikTok, I'll click not interested, not interested in content that doesn't match what I want. And I groom my feed. So if we spend more time engaging with positive content that uplifts people, then we will foster that environment. But I get why people don't think because it's just like, ah, and then they move on. Yeah. Where if they someone says something awful, like we just want to get them. <laughs> and I would, I would uh, urge people to maybe just take a breath, take a step back and not be immediately reactive to those people because a lot of the times that's what they want. Yeah, that's so true. Well, yeah. Chris, thank you so much for giving me a chunk of your time today. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. I, I love doing this stuff. Thanks for listening to Keeping Tabs. I'm Tabitha Kroc, and every Monday I release a podcast about different community members here in North Idaho. And then we end the weeks on Fridays with a podcast about the things I'm passionate about, outdoors, adventures, sports, the van life, and even current events. So if you like what you heard, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube, Spotify, or iTunes. Thank you again. Now go be kind and do something great.